We're going to have a look at rearranging scientific equations. It's a really useful tool uh, for letting us find our unknown quantities. There are two rules that we need to bear in mind when rearranging scientific equations. The first rule is that if whatever you do to one side of an equation sign, you need to do to the other side. For example, if you have this equation, if you multiply this x by 2, you also need to multiply the y by 2. The second rule to bear in mind is that the quantity divided by itself is equal to 1. We're going to start with Newton's second law of motion, which is force is mass times acceleration. Now we might want to find we might know the force, we might know the mass, and we might want to find the acceleration. So in order to do this, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by m. So we've got force over mass is equal to mass times acceleration also over mass. We do here, this mass over this equal to 1. Those can cancel out, and what we're left with is force over mass is equal to the acceleration. Now these scientific equations are really useful for working, also working out the units used. So in the example we've just looked at, where we know that the, f the acceleration is the force over the mass, we can use this to work out the units of the acceleration. So the units of the force, the units are newtons, which can also be written as kilogram meter squared per second. The units of the mass are kilograms. So for the acceleration, the units that we want to find, we have the units of the force, which is the kilogram meter squared per second and we have it divided by the units of the mass so multiplied by 1 over kilogram. Now we know from before that kilogram divided by a kilogram is equal to 1 so the units of acceleration can be written as meter squared per second because that's all we're left with which can also be written as meter squared second to the minus one, which is the correct scientific not um, notation. So let's have a look at another example of rearranging equations. We'll have a look at speed of a wave, v, is equal to the frequency multiplied by the wavelength. Now if we wanted to work out the wavelength, this one, what we need to do, divide both sides by the frequency, so we have speed over the frequency, frequency times wavelength over the frequency. This one and this one can cancel out. And what we're left with is the wavelength is equal to the speed over the frequency. Now once again to work out the units, we want the units of the wavelength, lambda. So the units of speed, metres per second, or you can also write as metres per second. The units of frequency is 1 over time, so 1 over second, or second like so. So what we have here is the speed, which is metres over second, divided by the unit of frequency, so we have 1 over 1 over a second. That's a second. This is a bit confusing, but what this means is that S can come up here and we have a second there. So what we have is meters per second multiplied by second. That and that cancel out and we're left with metres, which is a unit of length, which is exactly what we'd expect for measuring a wavelength. We'll look at a slight variation of this. We'll look at something now 
with a square in it. So we'll say E is equal to mc squared, the mass times the squared the square squared velocity. So in this case, let's say for example we want to find the speed. So again we need to divide both sides by m. We have e over m equals to mc squared over m. Once again, m's cancel out. And what we're left with is e over m is equal to c squared. Now we want to find c, so somehow we need to get rid of this c squared here. So what we're going to do is take the square root of this c in order to get just velocity by itself. But if we take the square root of this side, we also have to take the square root of this side. We're going to do square root. So we have e over m square root is equal to the square root of c squared, which gives us c is equal to the square root of e over m. So really important rules. If you do something to one left-hand side of the equation sign, you also need to do it to the right-hand side and a variable divided by itself is always equal to 1. Now we're going to have a slightly look more complex uh, type of rearranging equations and we're just going to use dimensionless parameters. We'll just use p, y and t and it doesn't matter what, what they refer to. So we, we have the equation y is equal to 2p t P minus T. Now in this sort of example you might be asked to rearrange the equation and give an expression for T. Now it's a bit complicated because T is on the top and T is also on the bottom so we're going to have to do some sort of manipulation. So the first thing to do is to bring this up onto this side. You're effectively multiplying both sides by P minus T. So we have Y p minus t is equal to 2p t. Now this side can be, can be multiplied out so that we get rid of this bracket so we're left with yp minus yt is equal to 2p t. We don't do anything to the right hand side because all we've done on this side is multiplied it out. So now what we're going to do is add a yt to both sides of the equations or if you want to think of it you just take this over onto the other side but if you're taking over a minus yt onto the other side this sign changes into a positive so what we're left with is yp so we're plusing a yt so we get rid of that one is equal to 2pt plus yt and we know from the question that what we want is t, so we can do the reverse of this step that we did up here by multiplying out a bracket. And what we're going to do is create a new bracket. So on this side, this side remains the same. We have t multiplied by 2p there plus y. And again, what we're going to do is take this over the other side. But by the other side, because it's a multiply on this side, it becomes a divided by on this side. So dividing both sides by 2p plus y. So we have yp over 2p plus y is equal to t. And there we have it. We have an expression for t all by itself from having had t in two parts in both the the top of this, this divided by and the bottom, the denominator and the numerator. So that's how to rearrange an expression like that. If you didn't follow each of those steps, then go back to the earlier examples we had and work through until you're able to do that equation by yourself.